uh, in our laboratories, we are developing and applying new imaging and analytical technologies to more predictively model and evaluate the safety, failure modes, and study signals of these products. And the goal is to define approaches that outperform the current standard to better identify signals, to better predict failure, and while we're doing this, enable the development of technology to treat vascular lesions. And this is vascular disease 101. Uh, this is a cross-section. This is a cross-section of an artery with a minor atherosclerotic lesion, and these lesions grow and may obstruct blood flow to the organs, such as the heart, brain, or legs. And they may be relatively stable, but unstable, as you see there. Lesions may rupture and lead to acute closure of the vessel with the clot. The clinical events would be stroke, heart attack, leg pain, or even death. Having said that, there's a uh, interventional devices uh, have uh, come onto the market. It's been a dynamic process over the last 30 years. Uh, and they've evolved rapidly. In the late 1970s, for example, angioplasty balloons came on the market, and these are <coughs> delivered uh, endoluminally via uh, a small incision in uh, the skin to the vascular lesion site. The balloons expanded, it opens the blood vessel. The next iteration was a metal scaffold called a stent that was again delivered in a similar manner to open uh, and hold open a lesion a vascular lesion or a occluded blood vessel. The, um, for both of these therapies, the vessel responds with, um, responds with an overgrowth of tissue, much like a scar that can lead to occlusion of the treated blood vessel. And when one thinks about disease in these blood vessels, at the same time there is a reaction to the implant or to the intervention. So there's a combination of pathology taking place here. In bringing a device to market, then uh, the manufacturer needs to show safety and effectiveness through studies that include preclinical bench and animal studies, as well as clinical trials. And this is the development and testing process, and it is the way uh, the, the business that we, we conduct, and it is a requirement. The pre-market preclinical testing, in part, is there to ensure device safety before entry into clinical trials while post-market studies may be used to understand the causes of device failures in humans that are identified after the technology is approved for marketing. And preclinical and clinical studies for the next generation of products may be driven by uh, signals from the post-market. So when we think about stents, stenting led to a post-market signal. And uh, the human failure mode, if you will, was restenosis. And this is an explant uh, cross-section from a human showing the, the blood vessel here that was originally treated. You can see that nice white material there. That's the muscle. Here's the atherosclerotic lesion. And then this, this patient was stented, and the resultant occlusion, that scar tissue, if you will, led to this adverse event. <laughs> well, in the laboratory, um, one of the critical questions is whether preclinical failure modes and signals predict human adverse events. And the answer is yes, but there are ways to improve the, the links between the preclinical and clinical. Uh, you have seen some of the, our state-of-the-art facilities here at White Oak. Uh, we also have uh, laboratories elsewhere. You've heard uh, James Kaput talk about the NCTR laboratory facilities, also about five miles east of here. Uh, where uh, Renata, who talked earlier, has a beautiful, wonderful agricultural, agriculture facility. We also have a facility, um, uh, a preclinical laboratory for image-guided studies. And in this facility, we have conducted studies using standard approaches to modeling and defining failure modes and signals. And like our, our manufacturers and sponsors, we conduct similar experiments. And this is a standard approach to looking at an interventional device such as a stent. And I'm just going to rapidly run through these, but you take a healthy blood vessel in a swine, for example, standard approach, you, you deliver a stent and leave the implant stent behind, and then eventually you can terminate the study, and post-intervention, you can do uh, gross uh, explant evaluations and radiographic evaluations, and in that right panel you see some of those stents, and you can look at the integrity of the stent under that radiograph, and you can look for stent 
uh, strut fracture, for example. Uh, and then, finally, the vessel and the stent may be cut into sections for detailed microscopic analysis, which includes identification of tissue level and cell level failure modes. And uh, you'll see a series here. The first is a, a nice, smooth response to a stent here. Uh, the second marked recently.